Oradour sur Glan, nestled in the rich and fertile French countryside on the banks of the River Glan. Just beyond the suburbs of the region's capital, Limoges, Oradour was connected to the city by a tram line, making several runs a day. The bustling community of more than 300 people served both the local population as well as visitors from the city. Livestock was a specialty of the region, and the several hotels and cafes in town served up high-quality meals. The church was known locally for its remarkable architecture, the ogival vault shouldered by four columns. Even the River Glen was an attraction, well stocked with fish for the part-time anglers. As the war raged on in other parts of France, Oradour remained largely untouched. The number of inhabitants slowly increased as refugees from other regions began to take up temporary residence in the town. On the morning of Saturday, June 10, 1944, many people had gathered in the town for the market, others for relaxation. The local farmers had come for tobacco distribution. Miles away, Adolf Dieckmann, commander of the Nazis' 4th SS Panzergrenadier Regiment, had been ordered to retrieve a captured Nazi officer. He was to go to the nearest town, take 30 hostages, and bargain. Instead, he planned the town's destruction. As the lunch crowds in Orador thinned around 2 p.m., there was the sudden sound and sight of German vehicles approaching along the Limoges Road. Over 200 Nazi soldiers, heavily armed, rolled into the town. A few residents who had previously been displaced by the Nazis made an early escape, fearing what might happen. The rest stood confused and worried. The Germans herded the townsfolk into the market square, proclaiming they were there to check identity papers. A systematic search of all the houses was next, forcing all of the townsfolk, even the infirm, out of their homes wearing whatever they had on at the time. It was just before 3 p.m. when everyone had been gathered. The Germans then separated the men and the women. The men were split into several smaller groups and led off to various barns and larger buildings, guarded by soldiers with machine guns and rifles. The women and children were herded into the church. In the barns and buildings, the men huddled together, wondering what their fate might be. It wasn't long before they found out. Around 4 p.m., an explosion shuddered nearby, a signal for the German soldiers. They opened fire. The machine guns stopped. The soldiers went through the bodies, executing anyone still visibly alive. They then placed blankets and hay over the bodies and set them alight. Many of the men were still alive. Only five boys managed to escape out of all of the men in the town, wounded, crawling through a hole in the wall, and hiding in the cemetery. By 5 p.m., the Germans had turned their attention to the church. They set off an incendiary device inside, inciting panic within. As the women and children attempted to flee, they were gunned down without mercy. One woman, Marguerite Rufonche, managed to escape through a broken back window, followed closely by a woman clutching her child. As the child cried out, the Germans were alerted and they opened fire. All three were shot and only Marguerite survived, hiding, wounded, in a pea patch. The town was next. Homes and businesses were looted and put to flame. In a matter of hours, the vibrant town of Oradour had been reduced to ashes. Only one building remained, that of Monsieur Dupic, the local draper. His house was well stocked, and the Germans spent the night there drinking over 20 bottles of champagne. After they moved out on Sunday morning, the Germans burned it down as well. In all, 642 people had died at the hands of the 4th SS Panzergrenadier Regiment, including over 200 children. In the following days, Surrounding towns, unaware of what had happened in Orador, witnessed soldiers riding bicycles and scooters bearing the names of Orador residents. To combat the Allied invasion, Adolf Dieckmann's division was ordered to return to Normandy where he, and most of his division, died in battle. Shortly after the war, General Charles de Gaulle declared Orador should never be rebuilt. Instead, it should remain a stark memorial to Nazi cruelty. It was pronounced that the hundreds of victims of this tragedy would be remembered with the honored distinction, died for France. <laughs>